Oh, look, it's extremely important to us, and we're very happy that, that Joel's decided to come back to Mackay Basketball. Uh, Wade's, uh, uh, sorry, Wade's resignation. Um, I was in a bit of a pickle, didn't know where to go from there to start with, and it was just a fluke. Joel and I were having a conversation about something totally different. And the ball rolled from there. So, yeah, we're really excited. It seemed like a, uh, you talk about it being a float because it's um, uh, basketball gods, a bit of destiny happening that sort of things worked out as they as they did and, and you've got someone like Joel back here. Oh, you could say that. Like, I oh, didn't want Wade to go, but um, uh, he, uh, a better opportunity came along for him. So, for us to have someone of Joel's calibre and skill set come back to Mackay Basketball, a place that he knows intimately and the people here know him intimately. Um, it'll be very seamless and um, you know he basically started the professionalism here and, and we think it'll take us to, to bigger and better things. So we've spoken about the restructure that Mackay Basketball has gone through now with you going into CEO etc. Um, it's important now that you've got someone um, like Joel here as well who you know quite well so you know that the show's going to run smoothly? Oh, I've got no doubt it's the show will run smoothly. Uh, I think it'll run better. Um, I know the rest of the staff are extremely accepting and thankful that uh, we've got someone of Joel's calibre here um, because there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than what people see. Um, there's a lot of work and uh, to have a, a group that works well together um, is very important. And like I said, we don't want to, you know, Wade's done a great job here. Um, keep keeping the ball rolling, but we, we don't want to stop. We want to get better, both on and off the court. And um, we think Joel's a man that can take us. Yeah, look, really excited to be back in Mackay. Um, have, you know, left here in 2016, and it's always been somewhere that's been close to my heart, and I've always followed the success of the program. And um, to be able to have the opportunity to return, I'm really grateful to the board here and Jason, as CEO, to, you know, um, back me. and. Uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get it rolling and get started. How did that whole process play out for you? Yeah, look, as Jason said, we had a completely different conversation about a different topic and then somehow we just started joking about the role and, um, you know, back and forth. And then within about five minutes, we, we got a little bit serious about the prospect. Um, took a little bit of work to, to kind of get to where we needed to get to. And, you know, for me, I've got a young family and um, obviously, talking with them about the move and, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, look, it just, it, it kind of snowballed really quickly from there. And when the opportunity came up to, to be able to take on the GM role of the QBL program and coach, there's not many jobs like that around the country. So, um, look, for me, it was a great opportunity to, to come back and um, some really good new challenges for me in the role, which was a part of you know me coming as well. Before that conversation, where were you sort of at in your career? Yeah, look, so, so basically the last um, kind of two years, I've um, I've done a couple of different roles. Um, so primarily working with Australian Indigenous Basketball um, as their executive, trying to grow the footprint of that program. Um, you know, doing my own coach development stuff through FIBA. Um, had great opportunities to travel throughout the Pacific and deliver coach development um, with them. Um, I've always kind of been involved in basketball at some level, but... The coaching was what I missed, the week in, week out, season of QBL, NBL1, that, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, when this opportunity come back up, uh, it was really too hard to say no to. Let's go through, I guess, some...